distinguished uh, dais, ladies and gentlemen. Festival of Innovation began yesterday, and today you saw the most spectacular festivities. For a long, long time in my life, and I lived long enough, I have not heard such applause, such enthusiasm. It's terrific. Yesterday we began with the Grassroots uh, Innovation Awards, and you remember the loudest applause was given to the poorest of them and to the women. Our heart is in the right place. We had uh, this round table in the afternoon and in the evening an honorable president came. Some of the world's greatest thought leaders had assembled there, led by people like Nobel laureate uh, Mohammed Yunus. You know, and we had some exciting discussions. Honorable President gave the concluding remarks and his uh, advice and guidance. And today, we have uh, Gatti Awards, Srishti Sanman. It has been a terrific beginning for the first uh, festival of uh, uh, innovation. There are a couple of things I want to begin with. Idea is like a seed and you don't eat seed, you eat fruit. And how do you move from seed to fruit? First of all, you have to put it in a fertile soil. Secondly, you have to provide nutrients, fertilizers, NPK and what have you. And then when the plantlet grows, you have to protect it, herbicides, insecticides and so on. There can be a bad regulation that can kill an innovation bad ecosystem that can finish it and so on and finally the tree grows and then you have the fruit and then you enjoy the fruit. The journey from seed to fruit, this entire process of innovation requires an innovation ecosystem and where this early support becomes very important. And therefore, first of all, I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, Renuka, Swaroop amongst us because they are the ones who are helping us to put these seeds in fertile soil and giving the earlier nutrients. Otherwise, we will never have uh, the tree grow. So just as you gave a round of applause to all the innovators, I request you to do one. The second point I want to make is about the book that has been just released and what it signifies. And you will see here equity, environment, ethics, excellence, empathy, efficiency and enterprise. These are the values we need to take forward. And if this has been done wonderfully well, I would say such a thought has gone into this. And if you can imagine You can imagine this message going around the world and what a wonderful world we'll have with 7 billion people smiling, not just some of us, right? I want to begin by picking up just two of those points. One is equity and second is excellence. The common belief is that equity and excellence don't go together. Yesterday I was talking about affordable excellence. What is affordable is not excellent, what is excellent is not affordable, is what we think. I also said yesterday, making high technology work for the rich is very easy. Making low technology work for the poor is very easy, but making high technology work for the poor is very difficult. When you talk about equity and excellence, excellence in terms of high technology and equity in terms of affordability. Of course, affordability is relative as uh, was mentioned by one of our uh, uh, expert uh, members yesterday, but when you look at billions of people under $2 uh, uh, per day as an income, you can quite clearly define what that affordability is. It cannot be affordability, it has to be extreme affordability. 
And therefore, when we saw innovations where, for example, for a person whose hand is shaking, you have a spoon which is not sold for 16,000 rupees, but 160 rupees, that is extreme affordability. You could have said 16,000, I'll give you 10% concession, sorry, it doesn't work. 1600 wouldn't work, 160 would. And therefore, this paradigm shift in bringing high technology, that is excellence and equity, linked to affordability and accessibility, I think is the big challenge uh, that uh, we have. It was such a joy to see, uh, you know, the award winners. Our Honorable President yesterday mentioned about uh, the fact that he's very concerned that our rank is 76. And then he also talked about the ranks of some of the other nations. I fully share his concern and we have to improve it. But what is even more worrisome is that we are 76. Uh, last year, year before we were 66, year before we were 64, and year before we were 62. So we have slid from 62 to 64 to 66 to 76. Do you think, based on what you saw in the last hour, India has slipped? I don't think so. Because when global innovation index is measured, there are certain uh, sort of measurement criteria that are used and I think there is a serious rethinking on those that need to be made. Like what Anil said yesterday, the grassroots innovation just doesn't get uh, uh, counted. And there are so many other issues, non-technological innovations, whether it's a business model innovation, uh, whether you have system delivery innovation, workflow innovation. A workflow innovation is the one which makes a cataract surgery possible not $3,000 but $30. And the quality, I have a table which shows nine para parameters post-surgery, all better than Royal College of Ophthalmic Surgery in London. Affordable excellence, extremely affordable excellence, right? Excellent because they beat Royal College of Ophthalmic Surgeons in quality, but affordable because not $3,000, $30, not affordability, extreme affordability. That doesn't get counted in Global Innovation Index and so on. So I think we have to judge whether we are uh, marching towards an innovative India in somewhat different way. The other point I want to make is about the young, you know, Gandhian Young Technology Innovation Awards. We heard about Young Technology Innovation Awards, but we didn't hear much about the Gandhian part of it. So I thought I will explain to you how the word Gandhian came. In fact, uh, Anil gave a brilliant example of how 1929, Mahatma Gandhi had given a grand challenge, 7,700 pounds at that time, which is 10 crores today, 100 million, uh, 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 100 million rupees, uh, around uh, 2 million dollars for futuristic uh, spinning wheel. There is a message there. He talked about a spinning wheel which was used by a large number of people. So he wanted the technological innovation to benefit more and more people. But finally, it is all about getting more from less. For more and more people. The Gandhian engineering term was coined in 2008. I remember, I mean, I don't mind giving a personal anecdote. Uh, the Australian uh, uh, academy had honored me with uh, uh, their fellowship and I was invited to speak on innovation and I thought I should uh, tell them about India and the way India does innovation, innovation as uh, has been known now. And the title of my talk at that time was Gandhian Engineering, getting more from less for more. Why? Because Gandhian principles were involved in that because Mahatma Gandhi had said that the fruits of science must reach the poorest of the poor. He had also said, if you remember, that there is enough for everyone's uh, need but not for everyone's greed. And there was a big message there because when we talk about more from less for more people, it's not only the current people 
but your great grandchildren and their great grandchildren. So more and more people, not only of the current, but the future. These messages were combined into Gandhi Nutrition. And you saw brilliant examples of Gandhi Nutrition today because everywhere one was trying to get more by using outstanding technologies and you heard some cutting edge technologies and making them affordable. You know, and I think this is something that the whole world needs today. This time, when I looked at the Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Awards, it's incredible. They were thinking of people who are left out, who are excluded. Excluded because of poverty, excluded because of disability, excluded because of distance, and so on and so forth. You saw technological innovation making deaf dance. They are excluded. We are trying to include them. You saw a breakthrough on something that is for visually impaired, uh, impaired children. And I remember last year we had the exhibition and now you will have the benefit of seeing all these in uh, the exhibition that we are going to shortly take you to. And I remember last year there was an innovation that we saw on email system for visually impaired. So these young people are not thinking about the next supercar or super bike. They are thinking about the people, their problems and their solutions. They are talking about inclusion, they are talking about inclusive India. This is actually fantastic. Worried about uh, poor people who don't have compliance uh, uh, for TV and they have developed innovative technological solutions that we saw last year for these people. We saw low cost solutions, in fact ultra low cost solutions for detecting uh, pneumonia. We saw breakthroughs on breast cancer, for example, and using cutting edge technology, by the way, photonics. And we are seeing these examples all the time. So I want to elaborate on this term, affordable excellence, because what has happened is that Jugaad has given a bad name to it. Jugaad is getting it done somehow, with no other consideration for safety, etc., excepting the cost. All right? We have seen Jugaad vehicles collapse and kill so many people in the past, etc. That's not the India of our dream. India of our dream is one which brings affordable excellence. Excellence will give you competitiveness. Affordability will give you equity. Exactly like what is projected here. Let me cite one example to illustrate the point further. Professor Anil Gandhi, uh, 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 Anil Gupta, chairs a committee to select what are called as Anjani Mahashankar Inclusive Innovation Award. It's a national level committee. Year before last, they selected uh, one young person, uh, Mishkin Ingawa. What did he do? He said, I can well understand why people die of cancer, but I don't understand why people die of anemia. And you can just think about it. Why should people die of anemia? He went into villages and found that the women were reluctant to give their blood. You know, they thought they were doing something precious. So he said, all right, I will detect a hemoglobin without taking a blood sample. And he googled and found out that nobody in the world had done it. So he said, great. And that's the big thing about young people, by the way. There is a nice definition of an innovator that fits the young people. Innovator is one who does not know it cannot be done. All of us oldies like me already know it cannot be done, not you. So he said, I will develop it. And then he said, why should it cost 100, 150 rupees? Why not 10 rupees? Not affordable, by the way, not 10% less, 10 times less, 15 times less. And he used cutting edge technology, photoplethysmography, <coughs> photospectrometry and advanced software for photon scattering and so on and so forth. Using high tech, he created what is called as touch HB. And Anil will remember when the award was given, it was given at the hands of one of our great philanthropists in the country, lady whose name is Anuaga. She's a member of our upper house. So she was giving the awards and he came 
and brought that touch as we put her around the finger and said 12.6, take care. <laughs> so you can just imagine what implications it can have. 10 rupees, you know, your hemoglobin levels, you can do mass screening, not only in the villages of India, but around the world. And that breakthrough came from that 20-year-old, 28 year old That's true inclusive innovation. That is true Gandhian technological innovation. And how do we move ourselves on that path, I think, is the big challenge. And therefore, one was absolutely uh, delighted to see uh, the big difference uh, uh, that uh, uh, we are having uh, based on uh, the awards uh, that were given. I want to tell you the award selection has been again tough. 1900 nominations from 50 technology areas had come from 28 states and 6 union territories and finally you saw the 43 selections so it is one out of uh, 50. 180 universities and institutions by the way participated uh, uh, in this and these are innovations with enormous uh, uh, social uh, uh, impact, uh, uh, you know, and it can be around. I also, taking that analogy forward from seed to fruit, these partnerships, because yesterday also a number of concerns were expressed in terms of, well, these are wonderful demonstrations of what we can do. But finally, the correct definition of an innovation is it is something that is finally an idea in practice, idea in the field, how are you going to basically take it. And that is what NIF is actually moving on uh, very, very uh, innovatively by doing a number of things and one of them is not only getting private sector involved, licensing, but also uh, finding joint ventures, JV. And this evening, by the way, on one of the grassroots innovation, there is a company called BVG, very entrepreneurial uh, uh, and very forward-looking. They and NIF are going to uh, actually form JV and do that announcement and launch uh, uh, the product. So these are sort of ways forward by which uh, we are uh, uh, moving and I am very uh, proud of that. I would like to end by just again congratulating everyone who was uh, uh, honored today. I want to repeat that that I in India must not stand for inhibition, not stand for imitation, it must stand for innovation. And you could see this part of India how uh, it is uh, standing uh, for innovation uh, from end to end. And I saw the loudest applause for somebody like Dargabai, you know, when he came on the stage, uh, I mean, it was incredible what he has been able to do in pomegranate, you know, with uh, three crore uh, plantations and so on and so forth. So India is full of uh, such people and I'm very proud that we have taken these uh, uh, steps over the past uh, uh, few decades to actually not only spot them, but not only honor them, but to help them actually uh, move forward. I want to finally say that the world is changing very dramatically. Many of you must be aware of the maker movement, advance of something like 3D printing, where democratization of manufacturing is going to take place. Our future is going to be in our individual hands. We are discussing with uh, Professor Stuart Hart yesterday about how, day before yesterday, how the uh, global supply chains are breaking down and it is empowerment to uh, individuals. And linking, I mean using the word exponential technology that Professor Stuart had used and somehow or other migrating it down to what you saw uh, on, on, uh, you know, on ground today is going to be uh, the future. So I feel as one gets old, you know, uh, one seeks such moments because they add, uh, let's say, years to your life. And I must tell you this morning must have added at least 10 years to my life. Thank you very much.